Well, you're obviously a specialist around Monza and uh, you have a good chance. You should have won the race there a while back and I uh, hope it happens for you today. Good luck. Thank you very much. And this is a man who is famous for his rapid starting. Last year, from sixth on the grid, he passed the five people in front of him before he got to the Retophilia. Four, five, go! Alessi looks good. Eddie Irvine coming out to the left. And up alongside Alessi comes Frenson, but sprinting through on the inside, the McLaren. Great start there from David Coulthard, I think, uh, from sixth on the grid straight into third place. Nobody's tripped over at the moment. And, and I think it's going to be a question of whether Jean can keep cool. Well, he, he has won a race before. He has led a race here at Monza for Ferrari for a long time until I believe it was a rear wheel bearing failure. He, he, he's comfortable in that uh, position up front. He's not had it too many times, but he ought to be able to keep his head. A lot of pressure on him, though. Italian crowd. He's out of contract for next year, although he's very, very quickly moving to the top of the list after his front row uh, grid position in Spa. And then again here on pole position. Been strong all weekend. And Lacey is now very much staking a claim on whatever drives are left there. Yeah. But uh, Alessi looks, we saw him on the grid, didn't we? He just looks totally under control, and uh, he knows how to win this race. Remember, he drove for Ferrari for, what, five years? And uh, he must have been round this place thousands Absolutely. of times. So Absolutely. I don't think he's under too much pressure. His view, well held. I tell you what, to hold that on the exit of that chicane at something like 140 miles an hour is no mean feat. And it's fear, rather as much as skill, that enables you to do that, because there's nowhere to go there. They're homing in on him, Murray. Yeah, they're catching. Uh, uh, Frentzen in second position and Coulthard in third position are both catching race leader Jean Alessi. The gap is down to 1.3 seconds. Well, uh, Frentzen can smell that nice shampoo that Jean Alessi advertises on uh, television channels around Europe. He's closing up right behind him now, four tenths of a second into the 25s on that lap from Frentzen, and he's got the bit between his teeth. Pressure is the name of the game, and so is strategy and tactics. Very soon, they'll be coming in to make what we expect to be their single pit stop, round about lap 31, I should think, in about six, in about six laps of time. But depending on the fuel loads they started with, it could be earlier, it could be later, but it's going to be very significant. But every so often, a Lacey is having a poor lap. He's dropping three or four tenths, and these guys behind him are much, much more consistent, even if they're not ultimately any faster overall. There's nothing between the drivers. The top, even Michael Schumacher, although he's falling right at the back, is within a tenth or two, but the top six drivers, there's absolutely nothing between them. Thanks. Lacey looking tentative now, looked very tentative in there and uh, a little bit tight, a little bit under pressure, not untidy. Williams are uh, apparently getting ready for a pit stop, be interesting to see which of the two drivers. I'm sure the ITV pit crew will be the first to find out because uh, now, uh, well I guess it might be a good time to bring Frenson in actually. Could, it would be a good be time to bring him in because if he can get a clear run on the fresh tyres it's going to pop him in front of a Lacey because any minute now and Lacey is now holding up Frentzen. Frentzen's in the dirty air and uh, might be a good time to pop him in the pits. Yes, yeah, so they're going to put a set of scrub tyres on which is a set that Frentzen's already used. I'm looking for blistering and again for the smoke coming off. They're red hot, those discs. Coulthard was a full eight tenths faster than a Lacey on that last lap. He doesn't want to be held up. Uh, Lacey is coming in, we understand. Good news for the two McLarens. If they're going to stretch this first stint to a long, long first stint, they need to take every bit of advantage they can. They cannot afford to be held up. And uh, Lacey's gonna peel off to the right, we think. And so does Coulthard. Coulthard follows him in, follows him in. That's a bad news for David because uh, unless McLaren can turn him around uh, quicker than uh, a Lacey, and they have to obviously start the game about a second behind, then uh, he's gonna still be behind a Lacey when they exit the pits. A critical stop there. No, the McLaren's away first. They clearly had more fuel in the car. They, as we talked about earlier, they needed to take less fuel on in that pit stop. A crucial move and a great strategy. That's put the McLaren out ahead of the Benetton. Yeah, and Mika Hakkinen is in the lead. Johnny Herbert and Ralph Schumacher together. And that ended with Herbert in the tyre barrier. Coulthard's ahead of Alacy, and I think Alacy is still ahead of Frentzen. So when this all shakes out, 
Coulthard should be leading this race. Alesi's stop was not as good as that of David Coulthard, as a result of which he's lost the place. But it was Coulthard who came home first for his second victory of the season and the third of his career. Alesi claimed second place, Frentzen was third. It was a fantastic race, uh, starting on the position and uh, finishing Infortunately, second. And I think today largely was down to the teamwork. As you see, when I was uh, in the pit stop, I got out in front of Jean, so this was a, a fair and square win, and it's down to the mechanics who did the job today. And what happened at the start? Because you did very well there, going from sixth to third. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, you know, I always uh, concentrate very hard on the start. Uh, you can gain places uh, in a few seconds. It can take you 30 laps to gain in a race. Once again, I made a good start, and that was the key to, to winning today. Now the pit stops, were they planned or were you waiting for maybe for Jean to make a move? We could stay out longer, but uh, as soon as I saw Jean was coming in, I saw his pit board and uh, the team confirmed that his pit crew were moving out and I thought the best thing to do was to follow him in because we know McLaren are the, the quickest when it comes to pit stops and it, it worked for our plan. Jean, a little disappointed maybe? It was a very close race for you out there today. Let's say I'm, I'm really happy to, um, to be on the podium because uh, Monza is uh, very special for me. Uh, obviously, um, starting from the pole position, uh, I was looking for the win. The car worked very well, but um, um, David was uh, just on the front of me at the pit stop, and uh, obviously I was not able to, uh, uh, to be quicker than him and obviously to overtake him. Were you worried towards the end of the race when Heinz Harold seemed to be catching you a little bit? Not really, because um, uh, I know uh, how difficult it is to... Uh, to overtake at uh, this uh, very high speed, but uh, anyway, I was uh, pushing uh, until the, laps, the last uh, lap, so uh, it was not an, an easy end of the Grand Prix. John, well done. Still a fantastic crowd out here, and uh, yes, I was on the second step there with uh, Schumacher and Senna back in 1992, and it is a, it's just a sea of flags and a sea of people, and it's a great, great feeling, and uh, after a good day's work.